Hi, this is Dwayne, N60MR. Uh, the video you're looking at today is the uh, installation of a Bluetooth module into the Anytone D878UV radio. So the first thing we did was pull the knobs off. Uh, this is a great technician, by the way, so this will be a great, good video for you to watch. That's a pretty neat tool. He's undoing the uh, retaining nuts on the uh, antenna connection, the uh, volume control, and the channel selector. Uh, you can do this with uh, a pair of needle nose pliers. The tool makes it nice, but it's not essential. Uh, if you're going to be doing a lot of radios, a tool like that is helpful, but uh, on a one of uh, using a tweezer and uh, to uh, move things around and actually put the tweezer works really well on the um, antenna connector for getting it started. Um, uh, and the uh, needle nose pliers, you can loosen and tighten these nuts. Okay, these are the two retaining screws that uh, will hold the metal chassis to the front of the radio. We're going to be removing those. Um, <clears throat> once you have those removed, and I, I have to tell you, I really like this technician's really thorough guy. Uh, he's meticulous in what he does. Uh, he, he is very careful making sure he puts everything into a, a, a safe spot. Uh, on his uh, PCB uh, assembly tray there, so he's a he's a, somebody I admire, and uh, we could learn good habits from this gentleman. Okay, so the make sure you have the speaker and mic cover on the side of the radio open. All right, and then we're going to be prying up uh, using a screw in the hole, pry up the metal piece out of the plastic. There is a rubber seal that goes all the way around the metal case. Yeah, there it is there it's popping out so you've got to lift that up and then you can slide that whole assembly out of the uh, front case of the radio just be careful because there are ribbon cables uh, that are connected so you just want to not be too rough with this that's why he's being very careful to make sure he gently pulls that out of there so he doesn't damage the ribbon cables or pull on the ribbon cables <clears throat> <clears throat> it is a friction fit because of the o-ring. Ah, there we go. Now you see he's been careful not to put too much pressure on the uh, ribbon cables. <clears throat> he's going to remove the large ribbon cable first. Just pop that connector open on both sides. And once you've done that, the cable will come out very easily. Now he's now going to do the smaller cable, which is at the top, or more towards the top of the radio. It's a very similar connector just a little narrower and he's popping both sides of that once he gets the connector open the ribbon cable will come right out there we go so he's got that separated now and uh, nice job and these are black washers these are dust seals um, they go underneath the uh, volume control and channel selector uh, knobs and uh, that is a seal for the antenna so these are all dust seals The black uh, washers uh, for the volume control on the channel, they have a, a particular uh, uh, locking uh, knobs on them. They, they have to go into slots that are inside the case of the radio. There's a flat top and then uh, that goes up. That is the dust seal for the speaker mic. Um, now he's actually getting this out of the way is uh, the cover for the speaker mic. And then last is the dust seal that, uh, oh, pardon me, he's got to pull the battery uh, connector uh, clip off. And then this is the O-ring that um, is all the way around the uh, metal case. Um, and um, you remove all this stuff so that it's out of your way. You don't lose it when you're working on the radio. All right, so the next step uh, uh, is going to be to remove the screws that hold the PCB to the metal case. Um, the screws he's going to be taking off first are the countersink screws. There's three of them. One down there in the middle, one at the top, and then there's also one on the side of the radio holding the microphone push, push to talk and the uh, PF1, PF2 buttons. Um, and now those are three countersunk screws, so we want to make sure you keep those separate. And I like the fact that this guy's got a great uh, workbench here where he can put the screws uh, where he can remember them and know which if it was important one was longer the other he's really got a lot of spots there 
So that's the three countersink screws. Now there's nine, a total of nine regular screws that also have to be removed. Uh, normally on a video I would do, um, not just narrating, but actually doing a video, I probably would pause the video, uh, kind of try to make it shorter here, but um, not so sure what type of camera is being used here. I know it's a really nice Sony, so uh, rather than pause and uh, cause some uh, disconnects with the, the flow, uh, this technician is actually going to just uh, keep on going and uh, you'll um, watch him be removing all those nine screws and um, it's a good he's got a good technique so it's nice to be able to see how uh, an experienced technician is going to disassemble the radio Okay, so he's going to try to uh, make sure that the board is loose here, and um, I can tell because I've done this a few times that uh, there's still a screw in there, and uh, he'll take that one out. Now the two on the opposite end of the radio on the bottom, those are the through holes uh, that mount the uh, whole assembly to the plastic case, so they don't get any screws in them until the very end. So. Okay, so he's going to try to loosen up the PCB here, and he's going to find out, hey, it's not coming off, and oh, whoops, I got another screw that I forgot to take out. And uh, so you can count them, there's nine. Uh, if, you, if you haven't gotten nine out, you've missed one. Okay, so again, he's going to take a look and see if he's got the uh, mechanical structure uh, of the PCB free he's going to open that up not too far now the uh, next step is to desolder the antenna connection uh, you cannot remove the PCB uh, without removing and, and desoldering the antenna connector and it's in that corner right there I'll try to uh, in, uh, put a uh, still uh, picture in uh, the video uh, a little bit later after I do the sound here but he's actually gotten that uh, connector he soldered heated up the connection and taken the PC board off so the first thing he's going to do now is he's going to be cleaning the pin for the antenna connector uh, there's a leftover solder on it and um, he's using um, a little bit of uh, solder wick copper braid to do that um, yeah, this is a very meticulous technician and uh, the, uh, the credit that of, of doing it this way uh, is that when you go to assemble it it's going to go back together very, not, very easily yeah, there won't be any interference or chunk of solder holding you from uh, putting everything to back nice and easily so he's done all sides of the pin right now I got to do one more <clears throat> Uh, it's got a very good controlled tip soldering iron that this uh, work is being done with. Okay, so he's taking a look. Yep, the pin looks nice and clean. It's hard to see in this video, but um, I've done this a few times myself. So now we have to clean the hole out on the PC board where the um, antenna pin goes through. Uh, when you desolder, you end up leaving that hole closed. So he's going to heat that uh, printed circuit board pad up and he's going to use a suction tool to remove the solder. You probably could use some braid here as well, but uh, braid has a tendency to cause a lot of heat, um, need a lot of heat to get the, the solder out of a, a PCB um, through hole. So I like using a solder tool as well, a suction tool as well. So 
and he's heating the solder up and he's going to suck it out and that'll uh, actually uh, open the hole up in the PCB and then um, I'm pretty sure he's going to clean up the other side of the pad um, with a little bit of uh, uh, solder wick as well and um, it's a good way, good thing to do you don't want to leave a bunch of solder old solder in there uh, and if you actually had a piece of solder that the pin hit you could uh, do some damage so all right and he'll be looking at it to make sure he's got that clear and that's an this is one of the most important steps that you can do is to make sure the PC board is clean and ready to go back assembly uh, so to remove it you heat the pin and pull it apart um, and then uh, now you're gonna you've cleaned it up he's gonna check and make sure that the board fits over the pin of the antenna uh, connector uh, so that's a, a, a really nice step he, he knows he's ready uh, when he's finished putting in the Bluetooth module he'll be ready to uh, slip that right into the case and it'll go nicely so here's the Bluetooth module it has a press fit connector on the far side um, this is a separate antenna that comes with the uh, Bluetooth module kit uh, the antenna will pop onto the uh, socket there on the the antenna connection on the board and uh, it's it's got a little bit of an o-ring um, inside so it's a little bit tough to to get it down so he's going to line it up and then he's going to need to use that uh, some type of pressure he'll probably use his fingernail to pop it down and there you go so now the reason that uh, it, the board does have an antenna on the board uh, the module but it's uh, going to be up against the metal case uh, so you really need to um, uh, use an external antenna now the the connector you see that white connector the board fits in there and it pops you just saw it pop down you just don't force it just kind of wiggle it and uh, it'll go right down now there's three really tiny screws so really be careful having the magnetic screwdriver is is really a good thing and the three screws uh, hold the module onto uh, some uh, uh, little uh, uh, pins on the board that uh, keep the connector uh, uh, pressure on the connector without too much pressure they're like little bosses that are on the printed circuit board so very very easy this is a very easy part of it uh, when you put that module on the board uh, use one finger you can feel the connector click click right in and then the screws hold it down so now he's going to be uh, moving the antenna, uh, the, the remote antenna, over to the other side of the board. There is a small notch at the bottom of this PC board, which allows the antenna to uh, uh, not be broken when you put it back in the case. Uh, so, and the antenna is held in with double-sided tape on a piece of foam. Uh, so he's going to be just. Uh, setting that down and making sure that the wire uh, is formed so it try to stays in the slot and you'll be checking that when you put the uh, unit back onto the metal case that's pretty much it uh, so he's now reassembling the printed circuit board to the metal case and the module is installed as is the antenna now he's going to he's going to do the countersunk screws first. Uh, there's three places. There's one right there at that circular speaker uh, annotation there on the board, the silk screen circle. There's one at the top, and these countersink uh, countersunk screws they kind of align the the printed circuit board correctly. Uh, it's a good fit. You, you really don't need to align it, but it's the safe way to do it. And then he'll actually do the third one uh, on the push to talk side. Now, uh, he, he's going to, the next step he'll do is he'll install all nine of the uh, standard screws that hold the board and, uh, PC board to the metal plate. Um, the bottom two uh, holes uh, underneath the screw he's putting in now on the bottom of it, that those do not get a screw. Those are for the three-hole three -hole screws.
Okay, that looks like it's the last screw. Okay, so the reason that you mount the board uh, with all the screws before you resolder the antenna connection is to ensure that there's no pressure on the uh, solder joint of the antenna center connector. This guy's really good at doing this. Um, I think I'd have him do all my modules. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's not a uh, overly difficult job. You just have to be careful when you're desoldering and soldering so you don't damage the printed circuit board. Uh, the rest of it is a very easy as disassembly and assembly process. So he's going to go in now with a good uh, uh, soldering iron, uh, small tip soldering iron, and uh, go ahead and re-solder the center pin of the antenna connector to the printed circuit board. And there is room in there. Uh, it's a little tight, but it, it's not uh, impo you know it's not very hard to get in there and do. It's very easy to see. It's very easy to inspect later. Again, I'm going to try to put a, um, a still picture in there that shows this joint a little bit more clearly after I finish the uh, narration here. Uh, so uh, hopefully um, uh, somewhere in here you'll see the solder connection when it's finished. Um, so you'll understand and be able to see it in a close-up picture. Okay, so now pay close attention on how this... Uh, uh, cables, these ribbon cables are going to be put back onto the uh, assembly. Um, oh, I guess, uh, first of all, I think what uh, this technician is pretty thorough. He's going to make sure everything is done, ready to go, all of his dust seals um, before he actually puts the, the, the last thing he'll do is install the ribbon cables and slide everything into the case. Uh, the outside seal uh, has a uh, couple of uh, large areas on it of the rubber that fit into some uh, uh, kind of uh, shapes into the metal case. Uh, that's what he's doing right now. That's the largest one is on the PTT side of the board. And um, uh, as you can see, there there's no other uh, tabs uh, on this side, but on the other side, when he flips it over, there's two tabs that have to, that are on the dust seal that have to fit into the um, metal chassis and he's getting them in there right now. This is uh, probably uh, something that's uh, more difficult than it would seem. Uh, when you're uh, reassembling the radio, that seal, uh, it's very easy to bunch that seal up uh, and um, uh, pinch it, which you don't, do not want to do. It would make it... Uh, um, uh, this is the uh, dust seal for the speaker and mic connections. And then the next thing I think he's going to do is put the dust cover back in. And uh, he'll probably use some tweezers to do that, I would think. Yeah. Try to do with this figure. Basically, it's a, there's a, a gap, and uh, it's tighter at the top than the bottom. So you just have to pop that rubber through that little gap, and then it's, it sits in there and holds itself in place. So um, one other thing that you should make sure of is... Um, there's a red uh, rubber seal around the battery connectors. If you're handling this thing, it, it could cause, uh, you could dislodge it, so you want to double check that before you put it together. So here's a, a trick. Uh, he's going to be lifting the uh, uh, paper uh, protection uh, tape up off of the ribbon cable to give him more room. This is really a nice technique here. So uh, uh, the cable goes one way, it's very obvious. Uh, He's got the connector uh, open, slides the ribbon cable in there, and then pops it closed. And uh, bingo, that's uh, double checking that it's closed. And then he is going to put the tape back so that it's a very neat install. Yeah, I really like uh, um, this video. Now the, the, the last ribbon cable is much easier to put on. Uh, you'll be able to see that uh, he'll, he, you pop it back and uh, the way that the case is made it's just uh, kind of fits on the front there and you can get that second ribbon cable in. Alright, so he's done with that. 
Now he's going to be sliding the whole assembly into the front case of the radio. Again, this uh, dust seal is very flexible, the one that goes around the metal chassis, so you just have to deal with it. Um, the, the, the only, once you get it in there and you start pushing, the only real problem area is the bottom. And you can see the orange uh, uh, seal around the battery connector right there pretty nicely. Just make sure that's flat before you put everything together. And um, there's the clip for the battery, holding the battery in place. All right. Okay, so he's ready. He's going to slip the slip it in there. Uh, it's a it's a friction fit because of the seal, the outer around seal. So he's got it in, and now he's going to be moving it down. And um, uh, this is a good video because it's going to show you he's actually going to have some issues on the bottom of the case with the rubber seal and um, you can see it there it's it's popped out and uh, he's gonna pull that back open again and um, gonna fit the seal in there and, uh, it's just a really uh, friction fit and um, you see it popped low and a lot of times you can go in through those holes those slots that are below it um, and I think he's going to end up doing that before he gets it in there. He's putting, putting a lot of pressure. Okay, and there it is, popped up again. So he's going to have to pull it out again. So this is the uh, kind of a... And now here's what he's going to do. He's going to pop that in place. And uh, as he goes through these holes, okay, he's going to uh, uh, use the tweezer to uh, keep that in place and you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second he's making sure that it's in the groove fully um, and you put pressure against the f you know back against the connector side and he's gonna now he's gonna actually do some alignment of that o-ring from the make sure that it's in place from the slots there that hold the that, that the battery slips into and bingo okay yep there we go perfect so now, uh, this is something that I would do differently. He's going to uh, go ahead and put the, the dust uh, cap on. That's not a problem there. But he's going to actually put the connectors on, connector nuts on first. Um, I guess that's okay. Uh, uh, I probably would put the screws on. So these rubber washers, there's a flat top and there's some knobs that the case has the equivalent sockets or, or slots that the uh, black uh, seals go into. And... All you need to do is twist it, turn it a little bit while you're putting it in, and it'll fit into those knobs, and you can push it down with your tweezer. The top of it is flat, and the nuts that go on the controls uh, have a very flat, uh, they have a built-in like washer surface, and they will make that uh, the, the seal uh, uh, push in nicely and tighten up for dust seal. Uh, and of course, this is the antenna dust, uh, ring and the nuts on the controls for the volume in the channel and then the uh, nut for the um, antenna again uh, I, I've also used tweezers to start these uh, if you don't have a tool you, you can just get them started and then use a needle nose plier to uh, tighten them up you don't they don't have to be over tightened you can feel the seal squash a little bit on all three of these and that's all you need to do is just kind of get the get them tight enough to make the seal okay and then he's going to put the last two screws in the bottom and what he was doing there is taking off the screwdriver bit and, and putting in the uh, special bit for the two screws that go through um, they're like a star bit. You, you, you're going to need the, the star bit tool uh, for those screws. You're going to need a screwdriver, soldering iron, uh, solder sucker is the best way to go. They, they're, they're, they make inexpensive ones for, uh, uh, you know, just a few dollars. Okay, that radio is now back together. Uh, knobs in place. And... Uh, 